Cool, what's up guys? Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna continue our series on working with Grasshopper and using it to create different kinds of shapes, other things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what I wanna talk about in this video is I wanna talk about taking these edges and creating a surface along them. So this can be valuable for a lot of things, obviously, but specifically I wanna talk about why we might wanna do that with Grasshopper and how we could do that with Grasshopper so that we could create a surface with um, thickness using that tool. So first off, could we do this in like vanilla Rhino? Absolutely we could. So we could just select all the surfaces and then use uh, inside of the surface tools. There's an option here for loft. And so you could come in here and loft a surface, right? Um, and you can select different types or styles, that kind of thing, click on okay. That's definitely an option, but the problem with that is say that I come in here, and by the way, this didn't follow along with the curve very well, but that's fine. Um, but say that I wanted to make a change. Well, if I try to make a change right here and I adjust my curve, this isn't going to adjust with it because these aren't really linked. So this is why we wanna use Grasshopper so that when we loft or create our surface, it's going to change along with any changes to the curves that we make. This is very valuable for looking at different options and trying different things, um, allowing you to be kind of creative with the forms that you're gonna create. So what we wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna bump this up to full screen right here, and I'm going to open up Grasshopper. And let's go ahead and kind of split our screen so we can see both of these. And so note that this is part of my series on getting started with Grasshopper. So I will make the example files available for download at the rhinoessentials.com slash grasshopper. So you can download the Grasshopper file um, that we create. And so what we wanna do is we wanna go over into Grasshopper and we wanna create a node group that's going to create a surface along these edges. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna double click inside of the space and we're gonna look for the option for loft. And so what loft is going to do is that's going to basically create a loft along whatever we have selected in here. In this case, we're just going to use edges that we've selected. Um, you could do something a little bit more like a generative or use some kind of formula or something. But for me, I just wanna draw these and then just create a surface from those. So the way that we can do that because nothing's happened right now is this is looking for a curve parameter. Basically what that means is that means we need to select curves and apply them to this node in order to generate our surface. And the way that we can do that is we can select whatever curves we wanna use in order to generate our surface. So we can just right click and we can click on the option for set multiple curves right here. So what that's gonna do is that's basically going to allow us to use our curves inside of the selection in order to create a surface. And so one thing to note about this is notice how this came in here and this is actually like over lofting this, right? So this is lofting this from one end to the other end and then to the middle, which isn't what we want. What we want is we want this to be the middle curve and this to be the end curve. And so what we can do is we can right click in here and we can click on the option to manage curve collection. That's going to allow us to see the data that this is referencing right here. So you can see how there's a bu bunch of information in here that we don't really need to worry too much about right now, um, though it is kind of interesting. Like you can get the length of each one of these curves, for example. But what, the other thing this is gonna allow us to do is this is going to allow us to adjust the order of the data that's in here. So what I want, right, is this is going from zero to one to two. Well, we want the one that's at one to be at the end. So I'm just gonna drag this down like this then I'm gonna click on OK. Well, notice how when I click on OK, what this did is this took the surface and um, it adjusted the order through which it was lofting the surface. And so what we've done here is we've basically created a surface using our curves, which is very cool. But what's even cooler about this is let's say that we wanted to adjust this. Well, remember, since we've told it to reference these curves, if I was to come in here and select some of these control points and move it up like this, well, notice how that curve that we're creating is going to move along with that. So I could take this and I could make it longer like this. This is all editing live inside of my program. So let's say I wanted to take this point, make it wider, 
like this, notice how this is all coming in here live inside a Rhino. And so the cool thing about that is you can use that in order to generate different surfaces and really kind of look at your options here. And we'll have future videos where we get more in depth on some other things that you could do with this. Like you could create panels across it or you could uh, like slice it into pieces or something like that. And you could set this up where it would do it automatically. This is very simple, right? We're just taking a number of curves and we're just lofting them right here. And what we could do is if we wanted to take something and kind of like finalize it, we could just right click and we can click on the bake button. And as soon as we click on the bake button, that's gonna allow us to set this on a layer if we want, but we're just gonna click on okay. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna actually generate a surface as an object in here. So now this has just been generated as a Rhino object. It's no longer linked to Grasshopper. But the cool thing about this is say that we were to make some changes again. So maybe move these up or something like that. We could bake this again in order to get a different version of this and bake it into 3D. And so let's say that we wanted to do something else with this. So we've got this in here, but let's say we wanna give it some thickness because objects in the real world have thickness. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another group over here. And so what I wanna do is I'm gonna double click in here and I want to set this with an extrude. And so in this case, I wanna extrude this object in a certain direction, right? So what we need to do that is we're gonna add the extrude node right here, but then we just wanna drag our base or our loft into our base. That's going to be the shape that's actually being extruded. But the other thing we need to do is we need to tell it what direction to extrude this. And so in my particular case, I just wanna extrude this along the Z vector. So in order to do that, I can double click in here and type in Z and find unit Z. And so when I do that, what that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna allow me to plug my unit vector into my direction. Well now, if you look at this, you can see that what this is doing is this is extruding this upward in a Z direction. And so now we can use this in order to create something with a little bit of thickness. Now, before I do anything else, what I wanna do is I wanna make that editable because I wanna be able to control the thickness in here. And so to do that, we can just go into our parameters and just drag a number slider in here like this. And you can drag your number slider into your factor. And let's go ahead, right click on this number slider and let's edit it. And I'm just going to set it so that it doesn't have any decimal points, so zero digits. And I'm gonna give it a max thickness of 10, like this. We're gonna click on okay. Well now, what we've done is we've created a slider that allows us to adjust how thick this object is. So I can make this thick just like this, um, so now I have an object that actually has some like real world thickness in here. And obviously we would wanna do some stuff where we get a little bit more specific with the actual numbers that we have in there. But this is gonna give us the ability to create these 3D shapes really quickly. And again, if we were curious what this would look like, we could just bake it real quick and take a look. So if we move it over, you can see how now we've got this three dimensional shape in here with thickness. The cool thing about it is it is in here as a solid too. So you could use different like Boolean functions or other things like that in order to create something really cool with this. And so what's really cool about this is now let's say that we wanted to use a different set of curves. Well, all we would have to do is just come in here and select a different set of curves right click and just um, set multiple curves like this. Now you're gonna notice that we have a little bit of a problem here. So when we do this, right, we are able to create this vertical shape. However, the problem is this is thickening this in the Z direction. Well, we don't want this to do that in the Z direction for this particular object. We want it to do it in, let's say the Y direction. So all we would have to do is just add a unit Y and then just swap out our number slider so that this is thickening on the Y direction instead of the X direction, just like this. But you can still use this in order to generate thickness. You do wanna be a little bit careful. Since this is moving this in the Z direction, this isn't giving you as nice of a solid shape as we got with the other shapes over here, but you can use this to really quickly generate these different shapes inside of Rhino. All right, and then one last thing that makes this really cool, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put these back as our curves. So we'll just set multiple curves. We'll plug our Z vector back in like this so that it's thickening. So the cool thing about this is you can also come in here and you can add additional detail, right? So let's say that I wanted to continue this shape. Well, I could just make a copy of these curves and then just add those curves to my group 
So I could just come back in here, right click and click on set multiple curves, just like this. And so what that does is that allows us, and notice how our shape is a little um, out of order again, so we're gonna have to go in and fix that. But what that allows us to do, so what that allows us to do is again, just control this really easily. So one thing I think would be cool, and there may be a way to do this, and I just don't know how, um, is I would love to have the ability to just reference a group of curves and plug that into my curves here. There may be a node that does that. I honestly don't know. So if you know of a way where I can just reference a group of curves, and that way if I like added something but it was inside of the group, then it would just add additional points in here. I would love to hear about that. So if anyone knows how to do that, let me know. But I will make this node group available um, at the rhinoessentials.com slash grasshopper if you want to download it and follow along and give it a try. All right, so leave a comment below if you have any questions or just let me know what kind of grasshopper tutorials you'd like to see in the future. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to some other grasshopper tutorials on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.